can't tell my new speakers, they work. So you guys missed all the fun over here. Friday between second and third block, my projector stopped working. The third block didn't have a projector to look at, which was a lot of fun because I don't know if I told you guys, but Thursday when my students took their conceptual checkpoints, six of them made either zeros or ones. And considering the answers were both on the board and in the notebook, having six kids make zeros or ones is inexcusable. So I read about the lesson Friday instead of doing the Halloween stuff with my third block. Really hard to do with no overhead projector, but they had to just listen to me. So out of the six people who made zero Fs or What's a one out of six, one out of five, twenty percent of us with the answers on the board and in the notebook right after I taught the whole lesson. So out of the six people, one was gone. So I meant five were here. One person made a three out of five, which is sixty percent F, which is actually a high high F. I was very happy with that big improvement on the score. There's still an F, but it's a very much improved F. That's much much better, right? I mean, that, that's a big improvement, especially for the child who did it. The other people made zeros again. No improvement. When you taught them the lesson? When I retaught them. And you already did all the showed them all the videos. And I redid the whole thing. And the, I did the stuff on the board again, told them where to go look in their notebook again, the whole nine yards. Frustrating, right? <laughs> that too. That too. Um, but I had no projector, so I do have to say that I had to teach it to them with them just listening, not getting to look at the book online, you know, the epic book. They didn't get to see it. They only had to listen to it. Um, Miss Galt came over after school Friday and helped me get this working. Apparently someone, when they were lining up Friday, stuck on the cord. See that cord that goes on the smart board? That's what attaches everything. So please be careful when you're lining up. Not in my room, but Miss Daniel's room and Miss um, Bermuda's room. That's what attaches everything. Well, they stuck on the cord in lining up and that detached them just enough. They didn't detach it all the way, but it didn't allow it to have a good connection. And um, it made it where that didn't work Friday for my third block. So be careful when you're lining up in each person's class. Okay? That, that was my lesson. Okay, so today is science and social studies. We're going over the assessment today. Wednesday, we'll take it. Okay, and there's going to be one part that I cut out of this because huh, their answers for this are kind of ridiculous. And when my students and I went over them together last year, after the test, they agreed that the potential answers were ridiculous. Um, so I'm scrapping that part of this test. In the very back of the book, that's not really helpful. So we're not even going to do the review part. Okay. You definitely want to keep your book because there's helpful stuff in your book. 
So you're going to want to keep that and use that Wednesday when you take the book. But the back of it, where it has those terms, those really aren't helpful. The Socratic seminar really would not be helpful for this test either. Yes. Those key terms really aren't helpful. If we spent a day going over them, it wouldn't help you towards this test at all. Okay. And I'm not going to have you do stuff that's not helpful. What is helpful is just straight up going over the question. Okay. And that's what we're going to do. All right. Going over the test. We're going to go over the test. Okay. So let's just pay attention to go over the test questions. Okay, guys. Your team has discovered fossil samples in the rock layers of the walls of a canyon. Using the diagram and the science journal entry below, two members of the team have developed different explanations to describe how the land has changed over time. This is kind of blurry, doesn't it, guys? This part over here does. Does that get any more clear? Not really. Layer A, a layer consists of thick ice, no fossil evidence is present. So that kind of reminds me of that lava layer, doesn't it? It doesn't have any fossils. Layer B, fossils include many large fern leaves, small reptiles, and other land animals, including dinosaurs. Bryson, I need you paying attention to that, not drawing. Okay. So layer B with fern layer, fern leaves, what was that layer was? Uh, well, if it had fern leaves, small reptiles, land animals, what was it? Was that once covered by ocean? No. No, what was it? Land. Land. Layer C, fossils include mostly large tree trunks and some that look like reptiles. What was that? Land. Land. Layer D, fossils show evidence of fish, clamshells, and brachiopods. C. It was C, it was ocean. Okay, so we go back here and we look at two different explanations and they're gonna want us to circle which one is the the better explanation. I can't zoom in because we need to see all of it. Okay. So explanation one, the environment has changed many times and now it's covered in ice. Evidence and reasoning. The area was once covered by an ocean. The fossils in layer D show animals and plants that may have lived underwater or near the ocean or near, I'm sorry, near the water. Eventually more plants grew and more land animals were there as shown in layer C and D. Then something happened and ice covered the land. There were no more plants or animals like dinosaurs. So that's our first explanation. Let's see if explanation two is more thorough. So two, claim. The environment changed from a sea environment to a land environment. The number of plants and animals continued to increase until the land was all covered by ice. Evidence and reasoning. Layer D, the oldest layer, shows evidence of sea life. This means the layer was likely covered in water at that time. Layer C shows tree fossils. This shows that the area then had some dry land for trees to grow. Layer B has plant, reptile, and other animal fossils. This shows that the environment changed again to support more life. Sorry, I took my breath. <clears throat> Layer A, the youngest layer, is all ice. This means the environment became extremely cold and the plants and animals could no longer survive. So if you think explanation one, part of the top is kind of cutting off this. If you think explanation one is a better explanation, raise your hand. I need everybody paying attention. If you think explanation two is a better explanation, raise your hand. Explanation two gives a more full explanation, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, so explanation two, you would circle. It says, use a diagram and journal entry to answer this question. Which explanation best describes how this area's landscape has changed over time? Circle your choice on the chart. So we'd circle choice two. And then describe why you chose that explanation. 
use evidence from the diagram and journal entry to support your choice. So the first thing is you're going to circle that second one. This, this you're going to explain why you chose that. Can someone tell me what you would say? What would we say? Why did we, why do we prefer two? Yes, ma'am. It gave us more details. It explains how the lands, let me give you this. It explains how the landscape has changed over time with evidence from the diagram and journal entry. It tells us what's oldest and what's youngest, right? Yeah. That first one did not say what's the oldest layer and what's the youngest layer, did it? Yeah. Second one did. You need to explain that on there. I know the environment changed because the fossils in the layers came from different environments. First there was water, then dry land, finally ice. Explanation one doesn't explain what happened to the plants and animals once the environment was covered in ice. It also doesn't explain the order. And it also doesn't really say all the layers. Correct. And layer, I'm sorry, explanation two does say that. It really isn't. This is you going through and taken apart those two explanations okay this is you analyzing their two explanations okay this is what they would call more of a meta-analysis you're analyzing somebody else's explanation does that make sense yes yes this is testing how the book okay Guys, you're looking bored, but this is your test to get out of this. Okay, and this one's worth a lot more than five points. No, you can hurt us. Yes. This is gonna be more on the order of 35 points. This one's gonna be a big chunk of your point. What if you don't if you don't do so well, it's gonna hurt grade a lot. So you need to be paying attention. Okay, right here is what I need to see. A sentence or two is not going to get it, Aaliyah. A whole paragraph? You need to tell me that explanation two gives a much more thorough explanation. Explanation two tells us about the order that the layers form. It tells us what happened to the plants and animals once the environment was covered in ice. It tells us um, about the fossils in each layer. Explanation one does not. Okay, yes ma'am. If you want to. If I happen to see this copied exactly and this show up directly in your answer Wednesday, then I know it's directly copied and it's cheating, right? Okay. Does I need this left up any longer or no? What page are we on? Um, this is from in the module assessment. This is from in the module assessment. You guys don't have this yet. I'm going to post this page by page for my online students, okay? Okay. And this is part B on here, okay? All right. Question two, this is 
one of those pictures that I was telling you about, you could not tell what was going on when I printed it in black and white. This is why I had to take it home and print it in color. Your team gave you a photograph and a science journal entry describing features they noticed while exploring another canyon. They have asked you to help explain how these features might have formed. Okay. Journal entry, location, Canyon Ridge. Conditions, similar rocky landscape for about five to six miles. So it looks like that for five to six miles, beautiful. The high elevation around the canyon is constant strong winds. The temperature at the canyon ranges from 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 50 degrees Fahrenheit at different times of the year. It is cold. It's windy. Notes. Many holes and cracks in the rock walls. There's loose sand, pebbles, and rocks on the ground. That's what all this is. Lots of loose sand and rocks. Okay, lots of waterfalls. More waterfalls back here. Mountains in the distance. Beautiful. These colors right here, those are different minerals in the water. Okay. And little, um, this is taken from a distance back. These are little rapids in the water. There's moss growing on the rocks. River at the bottom of the canyon. And some waterfalls, I'm sorry, small waterfalls around the canyon's edge. Okay. Develop a model, so a drawing, to explain the processes that may have shaped the features in the canyon. So you're going to have to draw a picture to explain the different processes that may have shaped the features in the canyon. So you're going to have to draw something that explains the weathering and erosion you're seeing in that canyon. Okay? And it's not going to be just scribbling to show me just generic weathering and erosion, right? So here's the picture that I have. The canyon. <clears throat> All right, Jackson, we're going over the test questions because you have a test Wednesday and tomorrow we're out of school. You've missed the whole first test question. There's only four questions on this test. So when I post this to YouTube later on, I would suggest that you go over this then, okay? So with the model, like we've always done before, you're gonna have to have words to explain what's going on. The canyon was formed by weathering and erosion from the moving water in the river. Rocks crack when ice freezes in them. And we know that ice is forming, is having a role in it because this says con constant strong winds, temperatures at rock ranges, I'm sorry, at canyon ranges from 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is below freezing temperatures, isn't it? And then it says many holes and cracks. So we know weathering and erosion is playing a role. Okay. And small waterfalls. So we know there's freezing. Mm -hmm, pebbles. Rocks crack when ice freezes in them. Moving water, wind, because we read that there's a lot of wind going on. Falling water weathers rock. Plants growing in rocks causes rocks to break. So this looks similar to this, doesn't it? So that's what you need to do, is you need to make your drawing look similar to this. I mean, vaguely similar. That looks really good, but I don't know how to do that. You can get it vaguely similar to it. Rock pieces fall down and can be eroded by water or wind. They're showing wind causing what? Is wind going to cause erosion or weathering? 
Does it cause both or what? Both. Both? both. Okay. Plants growing in rocks causes rocks to break. Falling water weathers rock. Also erosion because it carries it away. Moving water. So you see your broken up pieces of rock here. Okay. This isn't some glorious picture they spent hours doing, but they did make it look similar to this. They made the beach line, the canyon line look similar. They made the river line look similar. I need to respond back to Miss Miss uh, Sparks real quick. Where's my food? You guys got a PE today, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so your model. All right, guys, with words. Got it? Okay. This is your number two. This is your number two question. Okay. Like I said, there's four questions on it. Four? Five. Yeah, four. All right, number three. Let's let Elmo adjust. Your team plans to explore a canyon in Antarctica next. As a team leader, you must now choose possible sites for the expedition. On the map below, mark two areas where you think your team should go to look for canyons to study. This was like your question in Australia, right? So the red dots are supposed to be where volcanoes are and the things that look like mountains are where mountains are. So where do you think would be a good place to look for? Yeah. Michaela, go point out somewhere you think you can find canyons. Well, there, are there volcanoes going on there? Would it be a good place to look where there's volcanoes and mountains? It would be, actually. So look where there's volcanoes and mountains. Good, that'd be a good place to look. Where'd be another good place, uh, Ricardo? Uh, touch it, touch it, whatever. Good job, right there. That'd be another good spot. There's one other spot that I see, one of those bikes, and where would it be? Actually, two other spots. Yes, good job, right there. So those places where you have volcanic action and mountains, those would be good spots to look for canyons. Does everybody understand why? Yes. Why is it, Logan? Because you sometimes see long pole in the top of things, so that means volcanoes would be there and mountains. Yes. So where you have mountains, and especially where you have volcanoes with mountains, that's often where you're going to find canyons. Okay? Everybody get that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So unless I hear back from Miss Sparks again, guys, you are going to go to library today, okay? Because Miss Page was going to be the sub for PE. Now she's sub for Miss Daniels. Okay, guys? Help me remember that. All right. Library. Library. <laughs> okay. Um What is this like circular reason here? Let me give you exactly what they wrote. I chose those two areas because of the other features that are on the map. Canyons are often found in the same place as mountains and volcanoes. Both places that I circled are near both mountains and volcanic activities. So there's a good chance we'll also find a canyon there. It's like a long way of explaining it. All right, so that's your number three. So far, these have been short, right? Yeah, number four, not so much. Oh, yay. Yeah. I'm cutting one part out, though. You'll see why in just a moment. A friend is working on a research project in the mountains and has asked for your help. 
her team has detected some earthquakes in the area over the past few days. The team worries about traveling up and down the roads to the research site if the earthquakes continue. Why do you think your friend's team worries about traveling up and down the roads if the earthquakes continue? So we can understand that, right? Why would it, why would she be worried about that? Why do you think, Kaylee? Are earthquakes troublesome? Are they dangerous? Yeah. Okay, so we could start it with earthquakes are dangerous because what? She's traveling on what kind of road? What does that mountain, mountainous road look like? Is it paved? Bryson, help her out. She's traveling on a rocky mountainous road. There you go. An earthquake shake so those rocks could slide. Okay? So she has a valid reason to be worried. I wouldn't go up and down those. Okay? So we could say that her friend has a reason to be worried because she's traveling up and down a rocky, mountainous road. Earthquake shakes, rocks can slide and or fall in her car. Okay, can we all agree on that? Yeah, yeah I wouldn't be down in the car there. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna slide this up. Oh, yeah. We're not gonna do B, I'm gonna show you why. Develop two possible solutions to reduce the chance of a hazard. Huh? Y'all know me, I'm sarcastic, but this just gets laughable. My friend's team could use a net along the mountainside to catch the falling rocks. You're going to drop a big, big net on top of the mountain to catch rocks? That doesn't sound smart. That just sounds weird. Second solution is to build a wall next to the road. Well, what's going to happen when the earthquake breaks that rock wall? It's yeah, going to knock more rocks, down. more rocks down in your car. <laughs> Both of those solutions are, are implausible. They, one, it sounds like something Captain America would do. Okay? Yeah. It doesn't sound plausible. It doesn't sound believable, does it? No. I so know. I'm saying it to be. We're not doing 4B. Okay, does everybody understand why? Yeah. Because when I gave that to my students last year, I was like, okay, they know what they're doing, giving us this, but no. I understand that they want you to come up with a solution because it goes with that part. The, the big part of our project in module one was coming up with a solution to prevent harm to humans. So I get the idea behind this, but Captain America is not coming in to swoop in and drop a giant net by helicopter. Um, and we're also not building a giant cement wall to fall in on a car. Um, no, we're not doing those. <sighs> building dams, that's a, a very good solution that we do every day. But that, uh, no. And C is use evidence to recommend one of your solutions. Um, also, no. So we're working on 4A, and that's it. Okay? All right. Everybody understand why we're only doing 4A? No B and no C. No B, no C. I will come up with something related to what we've done before to replace B, and we're just dropping C. Oh, yes. Okay? We're not doing C. All right? 
So eight forty six. Wednesday. Uh, Nine forty five. We go to Richard. Richard. So we have another hour to go, right? Yeah. Library. To library, yes. So you guys we have oh two days at library. So we actually got through the assessment review pretty quickly. Wow. Okay. So I had intended on doing an end of module assessment video for everybody yesterday and both times that I tried it, Zoom would not pick up the uh, share feature yesterday. I tried actually three times and I went somewhere for migraine relief yesterday and the medicine made me so zonked out of it yesterday that I also could not do the uh, share assignments to canvas so sorry about that i'll get them posted this afternoon all right okay so the next thing we're doing is social studies so for my friends online you're going to go to your page that looks like this what is the natural disaster okay so while i pass out the accompanying information my friends you don't have a print out of this okay i'll post pictures of this uh to dojo but look for this in your printed out packet if not we can do this on notebook paper okay All right, guys, I have 22 copies of this. Don't write on it. 22 copies means I'm going to be using it throughout the day, okay? After school today, my husband is bringing it up, and I will have a printer in my classroom by tomorrow. A working printer. I have a printer. That one right there doesn't work. Yeah. Ooh, it's so pretty before, but after. Before is so pretty. All right, everybody has this. It looks like someplace everyone wants to go. Want well, the before, before, yes. Yeah, not after. Yeah, after doesn't look so pretty. After has a little blood hair color. Natural. Nothing like natural about this. Oh, it's very natural. Oh, a volcano erupted. Okay, you guys have your social studies folder, right? Yes. Uh oh, you dropped the notebook. Oh. Oh, yeah. You have your social studies folder, right? Mm -hmm. That's what the um, this is going to go in afterwards. Okay, after we're all done. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, Kayla, can you read this first paragraph for us? On May, the, on May the 3rd, 2018, the Hawaii Duke Island was on fire. I said the Kilauea, Kilauea, Volcano Erupted, Spurting, Spurting, Lava, near the island. Eastern 
Eruption. Eruption was followed by hundreds of So check that out. After a volcano erupted, there were hundreds of earthquakes. Does that seem weird? No. no. Yeah. Now it doesn't because we've studied it in science, right? Mm -hmm. Why would there be earthquakes after a volcano erupted? Because when the volcano erupts, it gives a big vibration. Well, maybe there's something underground that shifted that made the volcano erupt, and it's the same thing that caused the earthquakes. The water. There is water. Yes. There is water, but there's something else going on underground. No, it has to do with uh, plates. We're all floating on plates. Plates rub. It's a whole other thing. Keep going. Huh? Okay. Pangea. You'll learn about it later. Yeah. Puna. Puna. Puna is the area that has been most affected by the eruption. eruption. And before the explosion, the area was an important habitat. 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 For wildlife. As well as people's homes, people's homes, but uh, it will now likely take a hundred years before areas of forest became 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 to grow again. All right. What happened to that forest area? There were volcanoes and there were there was a volcano and um there were earthquakes. Yes, yeah, so why does the ground look black? Because of the volcano. Yeah, what about the volcano? It, the volcano lava turned into rock. The lava rock lava poured out on it. So on this first side, what was a natural disaster? Lava. Volcano. Volcano. Oh. Followed by earthquakes. Okay. What region is Hawaii in? West. West. Good job. I don't know why they gave us all this room to write a region. What impact did the disaster have on the local environment? Maya. I hope it didn't break it, did it? Unless your voice change and Anthony's tossing his voice over here. You don't sound like Anthony. Come on, Mr. Ozernak. Dude, I got to keep moving. That medicine they gave me yesterday made me sleepy. Oh my gosh, dude. It's about 14 hours.
Do what? You gotta speak up. I can hear you. What? Forest was destroyed. <laughs> And we'll take 100 years. To grow back. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Let me take this. Okay, are there any other um, things that they pointed out to happen? Did it point out anything else happened to the island? What's that? <laughs> yeah. Destroyed what? Destroyed local wildlife. Good. Destroyed local wildlife. Habitats and homes. Okay. I don't have that new page. Okay. So if you don't have this page, put it on notebook paper. Okay. Um, I'm guessing the lava flowed that way. Maybe it flowed from. Maybe it flowed from over here that way or that way. Yes. It, no, it's not. It's a phrase. This is just a way of organizing our notes because we're going to actually write a paragraph or two about this. So this can just go on notebook paper, okay? This question feels like it's the same as this, doesn't it? Describe the physical changes that have occurred and the physical changes on this region as a result of this natural disaster. So,
So what can we add to it? Uh -huh. Okay, so took away habitats for animals, habitats and food. Um, remove trees. Needed by us all. Um, destroyed homes. That's what remove trees. Destroyed homes. Okay. This one I specifically did this activity set because of this first article. In the leap practice set, they have a six page set of articles based on the Hawaii um, volcanoes. Okay. That's why I did this one because it starts off with this. Okay. This isn't nearly as much detail, but we'll get you started with this. Logan will because Logan can be heard by all. Logan will read the next whole article because the second paragraph is short. Lake Mead is a huge lake that um, was created by the Hoover Dam. Mm -hmm. So it's starting to dry up. So do you see what they're talking about? What they mean by the bathtub ring? No. So, see where it's light colored right here? 
that's where the water is dropping. This is where the water line would normally be. And this is where the water has dropped to. So this part is normally not exposed at this time. Okay, so that's the bathtub ring. This would be the part, you know how your bathtub, when you get out of it, it'll leave sometimes a soap line on it. This is the part that you normally would not see. It's uh, like a staining on the, the rock. You normally don't see this part. It's experiencing a severe drought. The lack of rain and high heat over a long period of time has also began to impact the landscape of the region. Without water, vegetation cannot grow and soils begin to degrade. The winds pick up these soils causing erosion and dust storms. So the second natural disaster we're going to do write notes about is what? Drought. Drought, which causes dust storms. <sighs> Minor ones. So Arizona, do you remember which region Arizona is in? It's not the one in red. It's in the orange. Southwest. Southwest. Okay, so what impact does disaster have on the local environment? Dust storms. Dust storms. What else did it mention? What did it mention in the article? Water in the lake dropping. What else did it say? Kaylee is very quiet today. Where did it mention about animals? So animals are doing what in the wild? Animals are doing what? Animals are searching for water farther. Mm -hmm. than normal. It is. Um, and then other animals are doing what? Some are searching for water farther away, so they're outside the normal zone, and other animals are doing what? Searching for and what? What is it? What do other ones do, Kayla? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, are they 
died. There you go. And others have died. Of dehydration. Mm -mm. Others have died from lack of water. Dehydration means lack of water. Yes. All right, physical changes that have occurred as a result of the drought. Besides what's happened to animals, what other physical changes have happened? Melanie, besides what's happened to the animals, what else has happened? What is it? Well, look at that last paragraph. What does it say? It's a short little paragraph that has a lot of information in it. The landscape what? Erosion. Erosion because what? Because winds pick up the what? Yes. They wrote it as one word, but it really should be two. And the reason the soil is so easy to pick up is what is not growing. Logan, what's not growing there? There you go. Mm -hmm. Doesn't grow because the soil is so dry. No. Uh -huh. 
says erosion because wind picks up the dry soil. Also, vegetation doesn't grow because the soil is so dry. It has a backside. Oh, wow. It was supposed to. Ah, uh, that part must not be cooked up yet. Yeehaw. There. Apparently not. Good news. We're not going to do all five articles. We're going to do the first four. We're going to skip the last one. five. We're going to do four. Sure. We're going to do the ones that are, well, we're going to do widespread floods. So we're going to do landslides because landslides is on a loose practice uh, question. So I'm doing the ones that are most applicable to me. The one that has to do with coral reefs, we're not doing. Might be, but it's not on the as far as I know. As far as I know. And it's not on the practice. We're doing the ones that are on the practice. We're double duty in this. Um on the social studies official curriculum, they completely left off region which is, it used to be the entire fourth grade, the whole year's curriculum. They completely left that, that whole topic blank. I'm like, fabulous. And then they put questions on it. And I'm like, how can you give me questions for my students to answer? And you left that whole thing. Zero students. And then they only, for the Native American studies, they had a picture of like Native American dancing around a fire and then a picture of Native Americans in modern day family picture and asked people, asked students to compare them and that was the sum total of Native American studies. And I'm like, that is not anything related to it. And then they had a picture of a forest and a picture of a city and said, compare those two. Okay, we're done. How do you do that? I'm like, well, now I understand how we're supposed to get through social studies. Like, oh, they're not talking to you, right? 
So what we're doing is a lot more detailed than what they want us to do, but it's a lot more preparatory for yourself. And you learn a lot more with what I have. So, read, please. Ron Source 3, widespread floods bring misery. Sadly. No immediate relief is in sight for many children. With heavy rain, melting snow, and rising rivers on close to destroying roads and gas, several evacuations with rainfall, totaling several inches, not expected to get up into the region. The National Weather Service has issued flood watches with flooding flood warnings throughout the region, including parts of Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. Due to these floods, many of the riverbanks have been demolished and have eroded away with the force of water, while in some areas the river has started to go. Be a little more disruptive. I guess I shouldn't ask that question. Okay, so our first question we're going to abbreviate the questions natural disaster. Skip a line, region. Can we still do these in our little packet? Oh, no. yes. If you have this in the packet, go for it. Okay. And then impact. On Enviro. Uh huh. Uh huh. Lots of abbreviations for me. Yeah, I don't like to write like the bold ones. <laughs> Neither do I. Um, okay. Natural disaster. What should we call this one? Um, what? Flood. Flood. It doesn't really say what region this is, does it? It could have been in any region, but it says Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. So Missouri is Midwest, Illinois is Midwest, and Indiana is Midwest. So we're going to write this as Midwest. But we don't know for sure. Well, it, it lists those, but flooding really could have been Midwest. That could be Northeast. That could be Southeast, West. It Flooding can happen in any region. Um, the southwest even can have flooding, flash flooding. Um, flooding can occur anywhere because it comes on fast. This article is about Midwest flooding, but we know very well that Southeast is prone to flooding too. All right, so it lists the impact on the environment as what? <laughs> um, it lists specifically evacuations. evacuations. Impact on Enviro. Enviro. Yes. Just a little thing. Abbreviation. Evacuations. Evacuations. What else? Flood warnings. Flood watches and flood warnings.
Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put on here physical changes. I guess we were talking about the roof. Physical changes to the region. I think that's what that sound is. <laughs> Physical changes to the region. What does it say in that last paragraph? Due to these floods, many of the riverbanks have been demolished. Riverbanks demolished. Riverbanks river demolished. We don't know what river it is. No, we don't. It, 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 the flood looks pretty bad. Riverbanks eroded. What else does it say? Uh, it says, away with the force of the water. River has changed its course. So if they're issuing flood watches and flood warnings, obviously there's a lot of what going on. A lot of, flow. Uh, a lot of what? Wind. Lots of flooding. That's the saying it's going to be going on for a while. Yeah. It looks pretty outside, but it doesn't look pretty outside. It looks pretty gray. The sky looks gray. Here. Phrases. A phrase. Phrase. There's Thank 
Butterbeer? Golden? Golden? But like a snowflake? A golden? A snowflake! <laughs> you sure you're not my son? Because <laughs> I know your humor. I know exactly what you're talking about. Gotcha. Very cool. Very cool. My mama's friend made it. I had a baby for I forgot what they're called, so I couldn't explain it well. What? He's telling you not to ever eat the yellow snow, what he's saying. Yeah, don't ever eat the yellow snow. Yeah, so he was talking about the yellow snow. All right, I'll read this last article, source four. Look at the picture, guys. Do you see where the crane is located? Halfway down the hill. Where? What do you mean? Look where the crane is. That is crazy and scary. Yes. That's a crane. That is a landslide, a significant landslide. Landslides are very common in Central and South America. That's a big landslide, yes. Landslides kill a lot of people. Not so much in the United States, but in other countries they do. Oh, I landslide. That's what it looks like, because why would there be all these, like, those are, I'm pretty sure, like, construction. You guys see that's a road? You see, it's a road that just fell right in. The Route 30 landslide in East Pittsburgh on April 7th collapsed a roadway used by 21,000 vehicles a day, damaged two apartment buildings and two homes, and is just one of more than 70 recently displaced examples of the region's roiling hills. These landslides can be inconvenient, closing and causing damage to roads like more than a dozen around the region right now, or even deadly. In February 1983, two persons died when their cars were crushed by soil and rocks in a landslide on Sawmill Run Boulevard near its intersection with McArdle Roadway. The biggest recent local landslide occurred in September 2006 at a commercial development site in Kilbrook Township when more than 500,000 cubic yards of earth and stone cascaded down a hillside and buried four high traffic lanes of Ohio River Boulevard and three adjacent railroad lines. Okay, so this is quite a landslide. That went way on down the hill down an apartment and on top of the house. That's a big one. Um, that's pretty amazing that nobody died in that one. When we were down in Costa Rica going down um, a highway, landslide down a mountainside, and it took out a Jeep across the highway and couldn't go down the highway. Our driver had to turn around and go a different route. And at the time, there was only one paved highway in the entire country. Totally normal. They happen all the time. Because there had been rain and there's rain daily there. Totally normal. 
people can get wiped out by landslides every day out there. Totally normal. We're so like, it can happen right here. No, not here. We have paved roads everywhere. But down there, they have mud roads all over the place. So it's totally normal. Can I make sure I have it? Okay. Uh, no, not right now. What is a natural disaster? Uh, landslide. Landslide. And the one we just read about was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So what region is Pennsylvania in? It's the rectangle. It's the rectangle, which is, nope. Rectangle. North what? North. East. Northeast. North. Nope, Northeast. Okay. Northeast where? Logan, no. Sit sense. down on your bottom. What's He's being silly. Impact on the environment. What is the impact? Okay, so it can close roads. Closes roads. Um, physical changes and can kill, can be deadly. Physical changes. To the region. Well, that's what the other one was. Physical changes to the region. It's to the region or to the area. Um, what does it do to the area? What does it do? What does a landslide do? Okay. Mud and soil flows down a hill or a mountain. Um, covering what? Well, covering, what does it take out? Roads, cars, what else? Buildings, yes. And sometimes people. No. Yes, she's not texting me back, so yes, you are. Bolton, I don't know. I don't know. Yes. Covering cars, roads, buildings, sometimes people. 
how people get taken out. Jeep. It was all taken out. It took out a Jeep. It was an open Jeep. What is it? It was an open top Jeep that got hit by the land slide. Rolled the Jeep right over and freshly came out of the Jeep. Freshly fine. They literally pulled them up. My husband are like, geez. I'm like, yeah, they're fine. So, yes, but let me do something else first. Okay. You need to staple your two sheets together. You need to write the name on it. This Melanie's gonna walk around and pick up your feet like this, close them up so they're like this. He's like way early, two hours early.
Put the notes that you took in your blue social studies folder, okay? All right, let's sign up. All right, bye guys. And I will come bye. back and load this in um, the sources um, into Dojo. Friends, I need you quiet. Here. And, and me.